This video is about correlated events. So this is all going to be based on probabilities of sets. And recall that, for some strange reason, statisticians call sets events sometimes. So this is going to be discussing correlation amongst sets, which is an odd uh, idea, I guess. That's a really weird idea that you can have, somehow have sets be correlated. So we're going to start out with some motivation, bringing back the idea of independence that we have seen before, independence between events. And then we'll use that motivation to lead us into definitions for positively and negatively correlated events. And then we'll conclude with two examples. Um, and the second example is actually designed to show you, to introduce you to a whole new world of statistics based around simply correlated events. So let's get started with motivation. So recall, what's motivation? Recall independent events A and B satisfy the following equation. The probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. But we now have a definition of conditional probability that can be made on the left-hand side by essentially just dividing one of these probabilities through to the other side. So I'm going to pick, without any real reason for it, the probability of A to divide through. But look what we've done. We have now created the probability of B given A on the left-hand side. This term here is indeed just the definition for the probability of B given A. So what we've done is essentially just created an equation that says the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B when the events are independent. But now what I'd like you to imagine is that if knowing that A has already happened increases the probability of B, then there can be situations in which the probability of B given A is greater than the probability of B alone. Let's say that one more time. If knowing A has already happened increases the probability of B, then there is a situation, there can be a situation where the conditional probability of B given A is greater than the probability of B. Okay, that leads us to our first definition, which is for positively correlated events. So positively correlated events can happen if probability of A is greater than the probability, wait, probability of B given A is greater than the probability of B alone. Or it could be written as the probability of A given B is greater than the probability of A. Or, and this one is almost the more informative because it's kind of the source of both of these, the probability of A and B happening together is greater than the probability of A times the probability of B. Now notice that from this last expression, we can get either of these two expressions by just dividing um, the probability of A to the other side or by dividing the probability of B to the other side. So really, this is kind of the main expression here that I like to focus on because it shows you how to get either of these two. But any one of these three defines positively correlated events, A and B. 
Now, if you were to read this as an expression that almost makes some intuitive sense, you'd read A and B are more likely to happen together that is A and B is the events A and B happening together than they are if they that is A and B were independent and when I say as if they were independent I'm actually referring to the right hand side here where we're multiplying probability of A times the probability of B. Because it's only when the probability of A intersect B is equal to the product of the probabilities that they're independent. So this whole statement right here, this expression, should be read as the probability that A and B happen together is more likely, greater than, the probability of A and B separately as if they were independent. Okay, so if we simply flip the inequality, we will get a definition for negatively correlated events. And I'm going to do the same thing. There are three expressions that all kind of imply negative correlation between the sets A and B. The last one, though they're all equivalent, the last one, in my mind, is the most obvious, the most intuitive. So the probability that A and B happen together is less likely than if they were independent and you could multiply the probabilities together. So we'll just write that out again. The probability that A and B happen together is less likely than if they were independent. And the same idea happens before. You can start with this last expression down here and recover either this one or this one simply by dividing probability of A or the probability of B to the other side and then rehearsing the definition of conditional probability. So let's start with a simple example. Suppose in some country, we have the probability that you are a smoker as 30%, 0.3. So I'm going to use capital S for um, a smoker, someone who smokes cigarettes. Further, we have the probability that a randomly selected person has lung disease, which I now see a typo down below, lung disease, which I'll represent with capital L, capital D, is 8%. And the conditional probability of lung disease, given that the randomly chosen person is a smoker, is 12%. Okay, so the question is, are, are smoking, represented by capital S, and lung disease, capital L, capital D, positively or negatively correlated, or are they independent? Given the information we have here, which most of the time is collected with some sort of survey or something, we can calculate whether or not smoking and lung disease are positively correlated. Now, I'm not saying here that one causes the other. I'm simply saying there is a correlation between the two. They are associated in some way. So let's look at, we want the probability of lung disease and smoking, which given what we have, we can find by the probability of lung disease given smoking times the probability of smoking. And we want to compare that to how does that compare to 
the probability of smoking times the probability of lung disease. So let's see, the right hand side here is equal to, um, let's say, so 0.3 times 0.08 is 0.024, okay? And over here on the left hand side, we have probability of lung disease is 0.12 times 0.3. Oh, whoops, did I just completely mess that up? No. Yeah, okay. Is 0.036. Took me a minute, I had to bust out a calculator. And indeed, 0.036 is greater than 0.024. So the probability that lung disease and smoking happen together is greater than if lung disease and smoking were independent. So in this case, we have found evidence that lung disease and smoking are positively correlated. Okay, let's try one more example. So this is a really common example in the world of association rules. Now, association rules is a topic into itself built on conditional probability. I highly encourage you to go check it out. In fact, I have simply taken this example here off of the Wikipedia page for association rules, though translating from association rules into probability or vice versa is not an easy task at first. I'm gonna help you see the uh, concepts here based on conditional probability. So if a new customer for your grocery store walks in and currently has milk and bread in their grocery cart, is this customer more or less likely to buy butter? What we're essentially asking is, are the events like butter, having butter in your cart, and the events milk and bread simultaneously already in your cart positively or negatively correlated. So we can answer this one doing a similar sort of calculation. We want butter intersect milk and bread. And we want to know how that relates to the probability of butter times the probability of milk and bread. So this isn't so bad. We'll start with the easy one. Probability of butter is just, look, we have data that suggests the probability that a randomly chosen customer has butter in their cart is two out of five. So this is two fifths. The probability that a randomly chosen customer has milk and bread in their grocery cart based on the data we have is, okay, so customer one had milk and bread in their cart and customer four had milk and bread in the cart. And there, we have data set of five customers. So that's just two fifths. Now this one's a little bit trickier to find. We need to find based on the data we have, the probability that any given customer has butter and milk and bread in their cart at the same time. Customer one and two had milk and bread, but not butter. Customer two had butter, but not milk and bread. Customer three had none of the above. Customer four had milk, butter, milk, bread, and butter in their cart, but customer five does not qualify. So that's just one out of fifth, one out of five given the data set we have. Do a little math down here. We got four out of 25 and five out of 25. Since five out of 25 is greater than four out of 25, we conclude that having milk and bread in your cart seems to suggest that you are then more likely to also pick up butter on your way out of the grocery store. Knowing things like this, in essence, tells you as a grocery store owner which items you should put closer to each other. If you can encourage people to buy more things, your grocery store is, in essence, going to make more money. And if you know which things seem to be correlated, then you're going to have a leg up on how to encourage your customers to buy more things. 
This is called association rules, and it's a whole wide world built off of the logic of conditional probability.